Consider the equation a squared plus b squared over ab plus 1, where a and b are both positive integers. Now, suppose that ab plus 1 divides a squared plus b squared so that this division results in some positive integer k. Is it possible to show that k will always be a perfect square? This question first appeared as the sixth problem on the 1988 International Math Olympiad and became notorious for its difficulty to prove. Notice that swapping a and b in this equation is exactly equivalent to the original equation, since addition and multiplication are both commutative. And the only solution where a and b are equal is a equals b equals 1, which means k will also equal 1, which is a perfect square. Therefore, let us assume that a is greater than b, because if we can prove it for a is greater than b, we will have automatically proven it for a is less than b too, due to the interchangeability between a and b. This problem involves a lot of squares, so it may seem reasonable to search for some geometric visualization that could potentially lead us to a proof. So let's give this a shot. Suppose for a moment that a is equal to b cubed. In the denominator, we have a b by b cubed rectangle. This means it will divide the larger square in the numerator perfectly exactly b squared times, because the width of the rectangle and the square are both b cubed, and the height of the square divided by b is b squared. For every rectangle that we fit into the square, we will have a 1 by 1 remainder, since the numerator is ab plus 1. We know we can't divide by another rectangle, because the remaining b by b square has a smaller area than the b by b cubed rectangle. But we know for certain that the denominator perfectly divides the numerator, since that's what defines the integers a and b in the first place. Therefore, the remaining 1 by 1 squares must fill the b by b square perfectly. And there will be exactly k 1 by 1 squares, since this is how many times we divided the top squares by the bottom rectangle plus 1 as defined in the original problem. Therefore, k is a perfect square equal to b squared whenever a equals b cubed. This can be seen algebraically as well. But now we reach a bit of a roadblock. Though we've just found infinitely many pairs of a and b where k is a perfect square, we still have not taken into account all pairs that fulfill our original premise that ab plus 1 divides a squared plus b squared. Here is a plot of the pairs of ab such that a is equal to b cubed. a is represented by the x-axis and b by the y-axis. These are the pairs that we've just proven will produce a perfect square for k. Now I'll plot all of the pairs of ab that we have not yet taken into account. For example, one of these new points is 38. Plugging this into our equation, we see that k equals 4, which is a positive integer, and a perfect square. But of course, 30 is not equal to 8 cubed, so this pair does not fall under the umbrella of our original attempt at a proof. So how can we come up with a proof that takes into account all of these points that seem somewhat unpredictable in their placement? This may seem counterintuitive at first, but we actually have to limit our focus to some fixed k and not think about all of these points at the same time. For example, let k equal 4 and let the x and y axis still represent a and b respectively. The plotted curves represent all the real pairs of a and b such that a squared plus b squared over ab plus 1 equals 4. Notice that some of the integer pairs from before fall exactly on these two lines. The curve has an upper and lower branch, and is symmetric about the line y equals x. This corresponds to the fact that switching a and b in the original equation does not change the meaning of it. So, since 30, 8 lies on the lower branch, we know that 8, 30 must lie on the upper branch. Let's focus for a minute on the point 112, 30. It looks like there's a point lying on the other branch with the exact same y value. Let's explore this. 
We'll start by plugging 112 and 30 into our original equation. But now we will swap out 112 with the variable x, because we want to see if there are any values of a besides 112 that, combined with the same constant value for b, 30 in this case, will result in the same k, 4 in this case. Using some algebra, we can rearrange this into a quadratic equation. The roots of this parabola are the answer to the question, which values of x will fulfill the premise that x squared plus b squared over x times b plus 1 is equal to k, where b is equal to 30 and k equals 4. We can plot this parabola and see that one root lies at 112, which makes sense since that's the value of a we started with and the other one comes out to be 8. So we got a new value of 8 for a and keep the same value of 30 for b. Looking at the graph, the point 8, 30 does in fact lie on the other branch. And now, taking advantage of the symmetry of the two branches, we can swap the values of a and b to reveal yet another point that fulfills the premise. Then we can repeat this process by plotting a parabola whose roots reveal a new point on the upper branch, then reflect to reveal a new point on the lower branch. This process will terminate once we reach the point 0, 2, because 0 is not a positive integer and therefore no longer fulfills the requirement that a and b are both positive integers. We can start this process at any one of the lattice points, aka the points with integer coordinates, that fulfills the premise and which results in k equaling 4, and we can be sure that it will always terminate with a equaling 0. And there's nothing special about k being equal to 4 either. We can do this process for any value of k. Granted, not all values of k will result in a curve that contains lattice points, but so long as it does, we can perform this process and it's guaranteed to terminate. We know it will terminate because the only points that we're interested in contain positive integer values. So we will eventually reach the element with the minimum positive a value, which will prevent us from going any further without reaching zero or the negatives. Notice that all the points we've seen so far do in fact produce a k, which is a perfect square. But what if for the sake of argument, we assume that k is a positive integer, which is not a perfect square? Out of all of the points that supposedly fulfill this requirement, let us choose to focus on the one with the lowest value of a, such that a is greater than b. I will call this point capital A, capital B. Let's see what happens if we try to find the roots of the corresponding parabola for this point. I will denote the two roots as x1 and x2. The first root is a, since we have defined a to be a valid integer, which produces the non-square k when plugged into the equation. The other root can be found using a little bit of algebra common to all quadratic equations, which I'll show on the screen. Notice that we get two equivalent equations describing the second root. The first is kb minus a, and the second is b squared minus k over a. Since k, b, and a are all integers, then kb minus a must also be an integer. Therefore, the second root must be an integer. We know the second root is not equal to 0, since it's equal to b squared minus k over a. The only way for it to be 0 would be if k is equal to b squared, which it can't be since we're assuming k is not a perfect square. And remember that x2 squared plus b squared over x2 times b plus 1 equals k, and we assume k to be greater than 0. Then, if x2 were negative, then the denominator would come out to be negative here, resulting in a negative k, which we know is not allowed. Therefore, x2 must be positive. And since a is greater than b, we know that b squared minus k over a is less than a, so also x2 is less than a. We can know this because a squared over a is equal to a, so then replacing a squared with the lower value of b squared, we know that this will be less than a. 
Then subtracting the k from b squared just makes this value even smaller. But wait, we've just shown that if k is a positive integer, which is not a perfect square, when we perform the parabola root jumping step for our minimum element, capital A, capital B, we find a new point, x2, capital B, whose components are both positive integers, and where x2 is less than a. But this is a contradiction, because we said that capital A, capital B already had the lowest positive value of a. Therefore, k must be a perfect square, which allows this process to eventually produce a zero value for a, which terminates the process and allows there to exist a minimum point, capital A, capital B, contradiction-free. This process we followed was first assuming that a solution existed, which violated our premise, and implying the existence of a solution smaller than the minimal solution, thereby creating a contradiction. This process is called Vieta jumping and is a type of proof by contradiction.